What famous person did you regret meeting because they were an ass? I've met lots of celebrities due to my job and where I've worked. Most are just normal people. One that does stand out to me, though, is Barbara Streisand. She was staying in a hotel I used to work at and wanted a set of small steps leading up to her bed to be made so her dog could get up there. She also wanted a fresh roll of turf brought every day for her dog to piss or shit on. On the flip side, though, Britney Spears is an utter sweetheart who comes across like she just wants peace and to be left alone. She used to like having flowers delivered to her room so she could make displays, etc. They were pretty good. I wouldn't say disappointing as I never was eager to meet him but Drake. Drake was just unprofessional and egotistical when I worked with him both times. This was before he got big big. First award show type level. He's told me to fuck off directly and I watched his mom calm him down from a tantrum. Jared Leto. I worshipped him as a teenager. Mainly from seeing him in Requiem for a Dream and my so-called life and his band. But he was the most pretentious and arrogant person in real life. Never meet your heroes. I've heard that so often. The way he talks on a lot of news shows never really sat right with me. Then he became a cult leader, and I noped out. I met James Brown back in the 80s when I lived in Vail. The man was dissatisfied with everything and generally drunk. Absolute flip side was meeting Mr. Rogers when I was at Pitt. That man was the real deal. You know the story of Mr. Rogers getting his car stolen. Word got around and the thieves found out. Next day, the car was returned with a note of apology. Nobody fucks with Mr. Rogers. Jared Leto. Hit on my girlfriend at the time, and called me fat. His brother Shannon was super nice though. I used to work in a posh hotel in Canada, vague on purpose, and I had met many many famous people during my time there. Most were forgettable interactions honestly, but one stands out as the absolute worst. Chevy Chase. He is a trash human being. He was totally miserable and insulting to all the staff, and we treated him with nothing but professional respect and courtesy. If I ever meet him again I'll tell him to his face what a colossal piece of shit he is. I can't watch his movies since. For the record the best celebrity guest for me was Dave Grohl. He's an awesome guy. Everyone always has something nice to say about Dave Grohl. Nobody ever has ever had something nice to say about Chevy Chase. I once met Bill Burr at the Comedy Store in Hollywood. This was a little bit after his first Netflix special came out and I was a huge fan. Saw all the YouTube vids out at the time including his famous Philly rant. Needless to say I was starstruck when I saw him and couldn't really muster the courage to speak. He was talking to some people in the hallway and I didn't know how to ask for a picture without being rude. So I stood there with my girlfriend kinda looking his direction. Once he acknowledged us, my girlfriend asked him, My boyfriend is a huge fan, may we take a photo? At which points Bill said, Fuck no I don't do pictures. My heart sank, then he smiled and said, Nah I'm just kidding, come here, where would I be without you guys? Then he motioned us in for a group photo and said, Now let's put our arms around each other like we know each other. He totally made my week. Dude is awesome. A famous soap opera star in my country, he came into the Dairy Queen I was working at. I didn't know who he was and my co-worker started hyperventilating and went to the back. The guy was rude, and when I handed him his cone he said, Is that all? Like he expected extra because he was famous. Yeah dude, if you order one scoop you get one scoop. Didn't find out he was famous until he left and my coworker came back to the front. Reggie Jackson. He was a childhood idol of mine. I got the opportunity to get a photo with him at some booth at a trade show called Internet World, years ago during the dot-com boom. No one was in line to get pictures with him so I walked up to get a photo while he was apparently trying to get the girls in the next booth over to sleep with him. He acted all bugged that I asked for a photo, even though that is what he was hired for and rolled his eyes. I guess he thought I cock-blocked him by just showing up in line to get a picture. I tossed the picture in the trash once I got it. Later that day I got a ball signed by Steve Garvey who was super nice. He replaced Reggie Jackson as my hero that night. Me and my sister saw Alec Baldwin, Tina Fey, and Salma Hayek on the street when we were eating lunch. They were just coming out of a car, about to go into some building next to us. We had no idea why they were together but in retrospect it was definitely because they were filming 30 Rock together. My sister said, Oh my god is that Tina F.E.Y. 
and Alec Baldwin turned around and went right in her face and said, Don't fucking say that, don't speak to us, why would you say something like that? You can't speak to us, not now. But it didn't really end there, he yelled again at us outside his building, saying, Don't look over here, turn around and eat your food, fuck OFF. He sounded genuinely furious at us. Almost like he wanted us to yell back and start something with him. Honestly my sister was on the verge of tears, it was horribly embarrassing. Everybody knows, now, that Alec Baldwin has a history of screaming at people. But at the time we had no idea. Don't get me wrong, my sister shouldn't have yelled at Tina Fey like that. But the way Alec snapped was straight up scary. Like he was about to physically hurt her. Salma Hayek and some other lady who I didn't recognize came over and apologized to us. She asked if we wanted her to go and get Tina and get her autograph because apparently Tina felt bad too. But we said no. She then talked to us about the food we were eating, which was Mexican food, and we ended up having a brief conversation about NY's lack of quality Mexican food. She was incredibly charismatic and sweet. Probably only for British people but my boyfriend saw Peter K with his bodyguard in a chippy. Didn't say anything but elbowed his brother. Peter K saw him and said, Yeah it is me, now fuck off. Pretty harsh considering my boyfriend was only 11 at the time. He was the compare at my friend's first gig and as he was introducing her he surreptitiously wound the wire really tightly around the mic stand. For that first vital minute of her act she was stuck performing an awkward unraveling of the wire instead of bonding with the audience. He did it on purpose. What an insecure dick. Met Kevin Costner and Clint Eastwood when they were filming near Austin. Costner was a jerk. Eastwood was amazing. And a caricature of himself. He's huge. Huge hands. The lines in his face are deeper than you think they are. But he was so polite and gentlemanly and gracious. Edit. It was actually a golf club where I was head waiter. Them being there caused quite a ruckus. I went so far as to stash them in a private dining room so they could eat in peace. Clint was very apologetic about the whole thing, profusely thanking me, etc. Kevin never even looked me in the eye. Just said, I'll have the whatever it was he asked for. And that was it. Kevin Costner did do some stuff that waiters hate. Like shaking his glass for a refill. With attitude. Stuff like that. Especially in a situation where I gave them their own space and no competition for my service. When I was six or seven Hulk Hogan pretend WrestleMania chased me out of a boardroom I wasn't supposed to be playing around in at Little League Complex. Cross by you in Pinellas County. Anyways the story is my dad was coaching a game for my brother's team. I went to go sneak around in an empty room. Hulk's son played baseball there too and he must have seen me sneak in the room. I was hiding under the front desk when he came in with his Hulk voice. Who's sneaking around in here? And seven-year-old me nearly had a heart attack. He play chased me out of the room while I snuck out acting like he couldn't see me. Looking back at it you can tell he was just having fun with a kid and his famous persona. But at the time I was absolutely traumatized and nobody believed my story. I met Shane Dawson at a restaurant I used to work at. He used to come in a few times a year with his fiancée and in-laws. He's a dick none of my servers liked him or wanted to serve his family. And I damn near had to fight some little girls off the property because they would not leave without seeing him. I met Will Ferrell at a movie premiere for a holiday movie. After the movie premiere there was a meet and greet, and the actors were lingering on the main floor. I introduced myself just to tell him what's up and that I enjoyed the movie. He looked at me with a side glance and stated, Get away from me. I was 12 years old at the time. When Will Ferrell was on Saturday Night Live he held a sign up with my nephew's name on it during the end credits. It said, Get Will Gabriel. My nephew had leukemia at the time. He even called him on the phone, also sent him his high school jersey. He was really nice. So I don't know. People are seldom as one-dimensional as we like to think. Bobby Flay we paid hundreds of dollars to go to a fancy event he was participating in. Waited for a long ass time to just meet him and say hi. He looked at us and walked away. Was a dick about it too. Ace Fraley of Kiss. It was at a rock and roll TV movie memorabilia convention in the mid-90s, shortly before the Kiss reunion, and he clearly didn't want to be there. He didn't talk to fans, didn't say hi, hell, he didn't even look at you when you came to his table. He just signed whatever you placed in front of him, and then you were hustled away. On the other hand, Adam Batman, West was at the next signing table and he was a totally cool guy, shook hands, chatted with everyone, 
signed whatever we wanted, posed for pics, etc. Meeting him more than made up for Ace's surly, hungover douchebaggery. Not my story but a co-worker's story. Let's call her Holly. Holly was a flight attendant many years ago, and on one flight Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown were in first class. Holly was going through taking drink orders and politely asked Whitney Houston if she would like something to drink but didn't get an answer. So assuming she didn't hear her, Holly asked her again if she would like something to drink. Whitney Houston looked out the window with a disgusted face in response. Bobby Brown then said to Holly, Um, she doesn't speak to the help, then ordered for her. If you're flying commercial, you are not hot shit. I cannot fathom the level of arrogance it takes to think people are so far below you that they are not deserving of being spoken to by you. My dad has been a radio personality for over 30 years and worked in country music for over half of it. He gets to meet celebrities semi-regularly. Apparently Keith Urban was really nice. Carrie Underwood was kind of mediocre BC. He caught her right after her performance, and she was tired. But Kenny Chesney puts the D&D bag. Direct quote from my dad. Kenny promised to sign some pictures, t-shirts, etc. for a couple of kids who won a game through the radio. Kenny instead took a bunch of groupies into one of the back rooms of the radio station with a bottle of whiskey and locked the door. When my dad tried to get him to open the door and fulfill his end of the deal, he called the cops on my dad and he was lucky enough to get a cop who was a good acquaintance. Cops said there wasn't much he could do other than make Kenny leave. So that's what he did. Kids never got their stuff signed so my dad gave them some coupons for free pizza. He said that after a few years other radio hosts told him they had similar encounters. Diana Ross I worked in a health club in a hotel across the street from a stadium when I was young. She came in, looked at the pool, which was a really decent lap pool, and said, My bathtub is bigger than this. I replied, Go back to your bathtub then. She wanted me fired instantly. HR told me to go home for two days because if they fired everyone she wanted fired, the hotel wouldn't have any staff. I met Russell Crowe one night at a bar, by accident. It was an old shitty, smoky dive bar. I just happened to sit down right next to him. I didn't recognize him at first but I asked if I could bum a cigarette from him, and he gave me one. That's when I knew who he was. He wasn't an a-hole. He was actually pretty nice but I could absolutely tell he wanted to be left alone. I smoked the cigarette and left him alone. When I was working at Best Buy back in 2003 to 2009, Robin Williams came into our store and purchased every single copy of Mrs. Doubtfire. He then whipped out a sharpie and signed all 50-plus copies for the employees at the store. He then stuck around telling jokes and just hanging out with the staff. I just wanted to share. He was deaf the best actor interaction I've had personally. So nice, rest in peace. Met Morgan Freeman at a bed bath and beyond. He was shopping for a teapot on a lower shelf and stood upright when I almost walked into him. And I was like, wow, you look just like Morgan Freeman. And he, without skipping a beat, was like, if I was Morgan Freeman, wouldn't I be in Hollywood or something? And the voice made me now like 99.9% .9 certain it's him. And I was like, I guess you would. Enjoy your time here. I don't regret meeting him and don't think he was an ass. Just thought it was so Morgan Freeman of him to have a line like that to make you wonder if you met Morgan Freeman or just a guy that likes to act like a character in a bunch of his movies. Do you have a similar story? Leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one.